Sorry, he's cheating with secret formula. Switch it to Nurmi. Let's do that. <laughs> oh. Draw yourself a little picture. It doesn't hurt to just like keep drawing the picture over and over again. All right. Students on the video calling each other annoying. Um. Yeah, you can. Uh, maybe not. Well, yeah, you can. We're gonna move on. I'm gonna move on in a second. Um, so, do you guys get this? And again, this is now like a problem we've done before like a million times, right? Uh, it's a zero over zero situation. Oh, maybe like a quick note. Um, why did I make such a big deal about zero over zero situations? Uh, because every single derivative is a zero over zero situation. Because, after all, these two points are moving infinitely close together, right? And if the two points are moving infinitely close together, then what's happening is that the change in y is going to zero between the points, and the change in x is going to zero between the points. And so like, the most fundamental like, indeterminate form, the zero over zero form, is in fact the form that every single derivative is in, because the two points are moving infinitely close together. Um, OK, anyway, uh, for doing this, we just turn to our algebra bag of tricks. This is x minus 2x squared plus 2x plus 4, something like that. And then that's even probably right. Uh, cancel, cancel, and then we get um, 12, yeah? Was that too fast or was that just right? All right, <laughs> feedback from the class. <laughs> People watching at home, note for the record that the class said, you are awesome. All right, good. Um, we get it. Thank you for all of this education. All right, so um, cool. So okay, we, there's like a whole lot of actual like stuff going on here, which deserves like a little bit more philosophical attention. But I'm gonna let that come up just kind of naturally. But like just to summarize, what we've done so far is if you trust the the standard story of how this all happened, we had a physics problem. The physics problem being find the instantaneous speed of a function at a given point. We converted that physics problem into a geometry problem by thinking of speed as representing the slope of like a line. Not if you're with me. Now we have a geometry problem, which is find the slope of a tangent line to a curve at a certain place. That like in somehow transcends geometry because it involves like infinitely small things. So then we invented calculus. And what calculus does is let us reliably manipulate infinitely small things. And we quite easily, because we spent whole two and a whole two and a half weeks like training ourselves on how to manipulate infinitely small things, when we see the ratio of two infinitely small things, we don't panic. We just like do some stuff and we get the answer. Now we have an answer to our geometry problem. The answer to the geometry problem is that if you ask me to graph the x cubed function, which looks like this and which has 0.28, then I can now tell you, dude, that function has a tangent line of slope 12. And now I go back and interpret that geometry result as the instantaneous speed of a function uh, of an object moving with this position versus time curve. You see what's going on here? We're constantly like sort of switching back from like the real world perspective to the like geometry perspective to the like technical perspective. Okay, cool. How are we doing? Good. And uh, this is gonna we're gonna talk about this like over and over and over again. All right. Now let's do something that's like a little bit surprising. Uh, I'll give you a, mm, sure, yeah, let me give you a function, f of x equals absolute value x. 
Uh, question. What is the derivative of this function at zero? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> let, let the record show that students broke out in hives and spontaneously started coughing and freaking out. Yep. Would it not just be zero? Okay, well there are, there are many, many options we can have now. We can draw a picture, we can like think about it, or we could just like kind of shut up and do it. Let's do all approaches simultaneously. <laughs> I know that, yes, I do know what the absolute value of x is. It looks like this, right? But what I'm asking for is the derivative of f at zero. In other words, what am I asking for? No. No. <laughs> okay, what's happening now, let the record show that what's happening now is that several students are vocally objecting to the very question itself. Okay, but fortunately in math, we don't have to uh, just have an opinion about what the answer is. We actually have a definition for um, the derivative of a function at a particular point, right? And this is our definition. The definition is that the derivative of some function at a certain point a is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f by over x minus a. So let's follow, let's, we, we've defined derivatives as limits. And we know what limits are, so let's see what let's see what the uh, let's see what that has to say first, and then we can like sort of interpret our results. What have you done? Woo! Yes. So f prime of zero is by definition. If we use that first one, then it would be like the limit as x goes to zero of f of x minus f of zero over x minus zero. That would be the limit representing the derivative of a generic function at zero. Agree, agree? Uh, what is f of zero? Just zero. Okay, so this is just the limit as x goes to zero of absolute value x over x. Agree? Ah, I have seen your limit before. What are you? Yeah, you are just like, a, this, this limit just does not exist. You are exactly right. Reasons, if this were, say, like, you know, a quiz or test on limits, what is your reason for it not existing? Woo! The absolute value of a negative number is the negative of the number. Yeah, so I think what he's saying is we should split this up into the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, and uh, solve each of these limits separately and show that they're different. This is, like, the professional way to do this problem, right? And... Now, using the definition of absolute value, if I'm taking the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, then the inside is negative, and therefore this becomes the limit as x approaches 0 minus of negative x over x, answer negative 1, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, now I'm taking the absolute value of something positive, so this becomes just x over x, and so this is 1. All right, so now you've backed up your claim that this limit does not exist. Okay, now we can have like a we can now have like a real talk. Those of you, so I, does everyone agree that this derivative does not exist? Okay, this 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 is the answer. And um, in some way, this is like comforting because um, uh, the answer to what is a derivative. Uh, well, there's several answers to what is a derivative. One answer is a derivative is a limit, and so the limit just does not exist. So there it is. Another answer, however, is that a derivative is supposed to tell me something. What is a derivative supposed to tell me? The slope of the tangent line to the curve. And those of you who immediately reacted with sort of horror, um, like why, what was the source of your horror? There's like a lot of them. There's like no tangent line to this curve, or there's like an infinite number of them, or something like that. Okay, more on this later. I want to do one more thing before the bell rings. Suppose I have some function. Here is the function f of x equals uh, root x minus 4. And now, suppose I want to know, so we know what this function looks like. It looks like this, right? Bum, 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 bum. It looks like this. Okay. I suppose I want to know the slope of the tangent line to this curve at like many different points. And if I want to know the slope of the, the, the uh, curve to this function at many different points, then I just want to do this once and for all. In other words, I'm going to take a generic point, calling it x, 
and this is x comma f of x. And now what I want to do is find the slope of the tangent line to that function at like at that generic point x. How should I do that? The same thing as before. What should I call this second point? X plus, x plus h. Excellent. And so, what is the what is the slope of the tangent line to this curve at arbitrary point x? It's going to be the limit as h goes to f the of x plus h minus f of x. Over h. Over h. And I should take... The limit of that as h goes to zero. The limit as h goes to zero. All right, I'm going to do this on the video for, um, the, for fourth period. But what you're eventually going to get is a function. And this is called the derivative function. The derivative function. Derivative function. The derivative function is a function which spits out derivatives. All right, good. Uh, I'll see you guys probably on Thursday. <laughs> Goodbye. Also, I'm just going to keep randomly doing this problem right now. This limit looks pretty hard, doesn't it? Period four. Oh wow, what is Does this limit look pretty hard? No. What should we do? Multiply by the conjugate. Notice how it's so nice that we are such experts on limits that we don't even have to think. Yeah, good. Wait. Um, you mean, you feel like in the frame. Yeah. Good. Finishing this video for two more minutes for the purposes of people at home. Whoa. What happens now? Is he doing it? Out. Yes. Da da da. Yes. X plus H minus four minus X minus four all over H times. And then the top becomes just H, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and then that cancels. So this becomes the limit of H to the zero of one over root X plus H minus four plus root X minus four. Oh, and now it's no longer indeterminate. I can just plug in zero. If you plug in zero, what do you get? 1 over root x minus 4 plus root x minus 4. In other words, 1 over 2 root x minus 4. Whoa. What this means is that if you give me the function root x minus 4, then the so-called derivative function is a new function, which is 1 over 2 root x minus 4. And what this new function supposedly does is spit out the slopes of the tangent lines to the curves of the various points. And so, if we sort of make uh, a picture of this function, trying to be kind of accurate-ish, so, then I can just plug in various numbers. What happens if I plug in 1 to this function? What is f prime 1? Following the formula, it's, no, I meant to say 5. Plugging in the formula, I get? Uh, 1. One half, yeah. Yes, yes, which says that the slope of the line is one half here, which seems very plausible. Yes. Um, what's another nice number to plug in? How about um, seven, eight. Um, nine, eight. <laughs> yeah, what is f prime of eight? According to the formula, it's eight minus four, four root four, two is one fourth. So if I go over to five, six, seven, eight, and when I plug a into this function, I get back two, right? So here's the point 8 comma 2, um, and the slope is 1 fourth. So that's what the derivative function is. It's a function which outputs derivatives. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line to the curve. So a derivative is a number, but a derivative function is a function. 
And the reason why it's called derivative is because it's like the derivative function. It's a derived function. It's a function which we derived from the original. Okay, goodbye, period four.